Hey everyone, this is my 18th update of my Aquion 50 Porter Corner Tank. Handful of changes regarding some fish and uh, coral. Just uh, want to start off with the uh, the clownfish that I had. Uh, the Alrod Picasso clownfish uh, did not make it because I tried to introduce a female in there, another nebula, and they were doing more than the clownfish, you know. The clownfish behavior, and, and I guess maybe I had two females, maybe I'm not too sure, but uh, shortly the owl rod stopped eating and then perished like three days later, and then the female went, unfortunately. Uh, so I decided let me just get a, a, a mated pair, a breeding pair, and I did have a small block onyx uh, clownfish in here, and I was just kind of curious of how would they interact before I yank the little guy out to trade him to the store and get him a better home but they bonded all together right away maybe because it's an immature male I'm not too sure but definitely going to keep a close eye on it but the breeding pair accepted him as part of their harem and which is usually unusual because a breeding pair will chase both fish I've seen it happen but I also seen it happen where three fish will live in harmony and uh, I think that would be pretty cool if that happened here. Uh, they're eating very well. So that's the uh, Picasso male there, and there's the female right here. Maybe if I get a little white on them, you see a little blue hue on them. It's uh, he's a body aqua rich uh, clownfish, and they uh, shine a little bit the blue in there. So they're pretty cool. Um, my other fish that I had, my deep water expensive. Uh, Curacao, uh, clown, uh, not clownfish, but bicolor bass late in the uh, blunt nose. Both didn't make it. Uh, the blunt nose never started eating, so unfortunately that wasn't uh, a good thing there. And he just perished. He just never ate. I tried to feed him everything. Didn't work out. And the bicolor bass was getting, I guess the, the earl rass I had in this tank, which you don't see right now, it actually sold the earl rass, but it was uh, just stretching out the tank a little bit. I think it was outgrowing the tank at the point. So the bicolor might have just got, he stopped eating. It was just eating all day and then all of a sudden it just stopped eating. And when a fish stops eating, it just a few days later, they don't eat again. It's pretty much they're dead. And that's what happened, unfortunately, to the, the bicolor. Just, they just stopped eating and stopped and perished. Uh, the, the candy bass that I do have is doing excellent. Swims all over the tank. Uh, not when I'm usually swimming around, but if you can, Okay, here I just got yesterday this one candy basslet, and then there's the other one. I actually bought another one, it was a little bigger in size because my other one that I had uh, was a little smaller. I had a little tape measure, it comes to the glass, believe it or not, like a puppy dog. Um, as long as I don't move too quickly, he doesn't get spooked, but uh, he's very comfortable in the tank. And he was under two inches, and the other one was at marked at two inches. Uh, and I said, no, let me give it a chance to see how I could get a pair going. And so far, so good. I mean, I would know right away if they had two fish in a tank that weren't getting along. One would be chased continuously throughout the tank, and I would have to tear it apart just to get out. But I wanted to experiment and gamble and try to have a pair. And so far, they're doing friendly and very cordial to each other. So. Uh, maybe they will pair up. I don't know the sex of the fish. Uh, there's little information on them. And there's, even with the bonded pairs outside the size, there's no distinguishing marks on the fish to show which one's a male or female. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated, but such a beautiful fish. And you can see the, the tinnic on them is very good. So, um, and the more additions is I also uh, traded in my tail spot blending because I wanted the, uh, the the candy basslet. But I also added uh, two more coral crouches, so I have a total of four, two from Africa and two from the Philippines. The Filipino ones are darker in color. Let me see if I could get the light on the one that hangs out in this corner over here. Um, he's right there. Um, you see it's blacker dots. He likes that spot over there. So. That's doing very well. I did add another spike fin goby, which I actually see one of them hangs around here. The other one hangs out the other rock. And I don't know if I can get a good video of him. Sometimes I see him in the morning. 
but I see this one more often than the other one. But I saw the other one the other day, so I know he's still alive. The ghost shrimp's doing very well. And the other there looks like it's been attacked by the candy bass lake. This shrimp right there, unfortunately. He was doing well not too long ago. And when I introduced my first candy bass, I lost a prima shrimp. These two right here, which you can see the one to the right and the left, the one's bigger than the other. One, the one to the right is the female. Uh, I did lose one of those to the other candy bass because he saw his antenna sticking out of his mouth. So unfortunately, I think maybe because it's new to the tank and it's not used to eat, dealing with the ornamental shrimp, I just maybe lost the shrimp because it looks like he's missing his half his body. He was doing well this morning, so something went after him. And I had him for a while now. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you have an ornamental shrimp in basslets. There's a chance you might lose it. Ooh, actually, speaking of that, oh, as you can see here, there is a spike fin goby. He came out. Let me see if I can get the light on before it disappears on his rock. Let me focus on there. That was pretty cool. There it is. Sorry, I can't focus on it, but pretty cool, right? And spike thing, Bobby. Let me see if I can see the focus before you lose him in the, in the rocks. Yeah, that's one of them. I have actually two. So cool little guy. It's so hard to focus on. He's so tiny. It's not picking up. Well, uh, yellow hawk this is doing very well. And as you see, you swim in the background. Uh, I have a blue obsessor fish. Uh, look very very pretty. And he doesn't like bite too much. He likes hanging out on the rocks. But as you see, he comes out in the light. Shines very, very, very blue. Nice little blue hue to it. He's from the Coral Sea. Very cool assessor. Uh, he likes hanging on uh, their habits. So they're just like hanging in the underhangs of rocks, hanging in the shadows. That's their, they'll swim upside down. So that's the type of assessors, what they do. I did get a Yasha Gobi too, as well, and a Ruby Red Scooter Blenny. Let me see if I can see the, the, uh, Circus Gobi. He's a Conda Gobi. He's pretty cool. He's there all the time. And the Yasha Gobi is right there in the background. Let me see if I can get a. There you see the Yasha Gobi right there in the background. So he's fairly new. I did uh, remove a lot of sand in my tank. And the reason why is one, I was trying to knock down the phosphates. And also the was dual purpose because I was removing my two, actually a pair of Pivo pistol shrimps. Uh, they weren't doing anything wrong outside of burying my coral because they dig a lot of sand and put piles of sand everywhere. So it's just a pain in the neck to, you know, you know, they take damage to coral as you can see here. And, you know, hopefully they will cover. It seems like this one's trying to recover. This green one, long tentacles, messed up too as well. This one was completely buried. This one was doing pretty good. I think this one's actually untouched. And then this red one underneath the shrimp there had a little damage too as well. Um, so hopefully they do rebound. Um, and I'll keep you updated. And also I want to try to get other coral in this tank because my phosphates were at 5.0, which was ridiculously high. I don't have any hair algae, but I think it has to do with either the overfeeding I do or... It has to do with um, uh, the sand bed because it was so it was like between two two and a half inches and generally that's not a good size of sand bed you either have a deep sand bed which is like seven inches or more or something like a coating which I'm trying to do now so I removed about 20 pounds of sand in my guess I uh, just wanted a coating just to have the look but not enough where it could uh, you know, stick a lot of, you know, hold on to a lot of uh, detritus and stuff like that to cause the phosphates and the other levels to jump. Even though my other levels were actually excellent, it was really the phosphate level, so. But 
that's pretty much the story with that. I will keep you updated and see how those uh, phosphate levels, if they come down a little bit, my next update. But outside of that, fish are doing very good. They're all peaceful, hanging out with each other. I'm glad I was able to get the spike fin on the video this time around because generally they don't come out too often. But there was one there swimming there and he's still hanging out. I guess it's so hard to focus, it's so tiny and he hangs out in the shadows. So, doing very well. And I'll keep you updated with all the fish and hopefully the thing, everything does well. And hope your tanks are doing very well and thriving and happy reaping.